Exercising options is the subject we're going to discuss. This is always a little bit tricky. Uh, once you get a good understanding of what exercising means, then it becomes a question of whether or not you exercise. Uh, and that's not always a clear answer. There are some probabilities. That's kind of the conclusion we'll come to at the end of this. But for now, to understand what exercising means, let's talk about options grants uh, and what options are. So remember, options are the option to purchase stock at a later date. Uh, when a company gives you an options grant, they're essentially saying, over time, you will accrue options. That's called vesting. Over time, you will vest until the end of your period. Uh, in this case, you'll have a 1,000 options to buy shares later. And you can make a decision to change those options into actual shares. In order to do that, you actually have to pay the company money, which is called exercise your options. Uh, that doesn't happen for free. The options have a price associated with them, and that price is called the strike price. So we're going to talk about all those concepts, uh, and then we're going to talk about good outcomes and bad outcomes around exercising your options. So how are the options priced? What are they worth? Um, it, the law is that the day that an option is granted, whatever the value of the shares in the corporation are on that date uh, become the grant price. Uh, and that is the price of each option, of each share. So in this case, we're going to say, the day of grant, your company's shares were worth $1. Okay? So each of your options is granted at a dollar. That also becomes what's called the strike price, meaning strike means to exercise your option, to turn it into stock. Uh, if you choose to do that, you're going to have to pay the company one dollar per share, in this case a thousand options, so one dollar per option to turn them into shares. Uh, so that would cost you a thousand bucks in this case uh, to exercise. That's what they call the strike price. Okay? So the data grant, shares are worth a buck. They give you a thousand options for shares. You work at the company for four years and you accrue all of those options. Uh, and then you leave the company and you have to decide, do I want to turn those into stock or not? Uh, in many cases, you have 90 days to do so, some time frame, uh, sometimes longer if you stay employed with the company. Uh, but eventually, you have to make a decision about whether or not you want to turn those options into stock. So the big question becomes, how much are the shares worth the day that you want to exercise or that you're thinking about exercising? So let's talk about a few uh, possibilities here. You've got a thousand options uh, that have happened over, you know, that you've accrued over four years. Uh, and when you got the options, they were worth a dollar each. So we're going to talk about a private company and a public company. Okay? So in a private company, let's say a startup, um, you have the important thing here is the valuation of the startup, is how much the shares are worth. And that's established essentially based on whatever investors or purchaser uh, are going to pay the company for shares, if they purchase your company or if they invest in the company. So let's say this is a graph of your valuation over time. In the beginning of your startup, you were worth zero. Um, this is time here, and this is how much each share is worth. In the beginning, you're worth zero. Uh, then you raise a little money, and, you're, you get, and then you do some sales, and things go better and better, right? So your options were granted right here at $1, right? And that is the value that you're going to have to pay the company to turn your options into stock. So if you continue over time, at the end of your four-year vesting period here, uh, let's say now your stock is worth $10. Okay, this is a great situation. Uh, and if there is a market for your stock, sometimes private companies are illiquid, meaning you can't sell those shares, uh, then you have to make a decision about whether or not to exercise your options. In this case, if you exercised your options, you had 1,000 options and the strike price is a dollar, so you do a thousand options times one dollar. You'd have to come up with a thousand dollars, and you you literally write the company a check for a thousand dollars, and then you'd have one thousand shares. Okay. But once you have a thousand shares, in this case, they're worth ten bucks. So your you your shares are worth ten thousand dollars. Okay. So this is a nine thousand dollar profit. That's good news for you. That's a great outcome. Uh, now, if this is illiquid, meaning you can't sell it, which it often is, 
you're betting that the company's going to continue doing well until it's sold uh, or until you get an opportunity to sell that stock so that you can profit from it. And that may be years after you leave a company until something like that happens. So you're really betting, you know, essentially this is options theory. You're betting $1,000 uh, and you've got an upside of right now of 9000 maybe even more in the future. So you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to turn this into stock. I think things are looking good for this company. So uh, the overall odds are that it's going to turn out well. Eventually they're going to sell our IPO and there's going to be some liquidity so I can, I can sell some of my shares. Now, in a public company, this is substantially easier because the shares are public on the open market. There's already liquidity. So in this case, uh, if you're, here's your share price over time. Right? It kind of goes up and down and up and down. And you get options granted here for a dollar. Same thing, a thousand options. So you're going to have to come up with a thousand options times a dollar, a thousand dollars. And you're going to pay the company to turn those things into stock. And then the stock price is up here at ten dollars. You go through the same process. You exercise your options, you watch the stock price. You sell. You can sell the stock on the open market because there's liquidity here. Again, nine thousand dollar profit. Uh, those are great. The difference between, of course, this line and this line is your profit. Okay. Those are great outcomes. Good for you. The problems arise when company stock goes down, or the value in, in terms of a private company uh, goes down, and that can happen for a bunch of reasons. Um, really quickly, the public company is easy. Uh, let's say you're op here's the stock price, and your options were granted right here at a dollar. Okay, and you hold on to the stock and hold on to the stock and hold on to the stock, and it goes down here, and you have to decide whether to exercise. And the stock is at fifty cents. Are you going to exercise here? Of course not, because in this case you'd have to come up with a thousand shares times one dollar equals a thousand dollars. You'd have to come up with a thousand dollars to turn this into stock. And then if you turn around and sold it, you'd only get five hundred dollars. You'd get fifty cents times your thousand shares. So this would be a loss. This would be bad. Now that's a bad outcome. Now of course you could hold on to your shares and wait for the stock to go back up. Uh, but you might as well just buy stock on the open market in this case because it's substantially cheaper to buy a thousand shares on the open market. So you probably wouldn't exercise these options if they were under what's called, that's called underwater, by the way, uh, when the value of the stock is less than the grant price of your options. That's called under, being underwater. So in this case, in a private company, it's a little harder because there's no liquidity. Uh, but let's say this is the valuation of your company as you go through various stages and then it kind of, you have tough times and it goes down. It's really pretty much the same concept. Uh, except you, there's no liquidity, so you can't buy shares. Uh, in this case, if they were issued at a dollar, and now at the end of your grant they're at 50 cents, you have to make a decision. Uh, since I can't buy shares on the open market, do you think this is going to go back up or not? Uh, and depending on how confident you are, you may choose to exercise those options, but you're still underwater here. Uh, this is no better than that situation, only there's less liquidity. So if you f feel like you really want to buy shares in that corporation, you wouldn't get a chance otherwise. Uh, that might be the reason to exercise. So exercising options has to do with betting uh, that the company's fortunes are going to go well. Or in the case of a public company, you, there's liquidity. You can exercise and sell your stock in the open market the same day. Uh, that's how you make a profit. Now, there's tax implications, of course, to this. Uh, remember that if you are exercising and making a profit in the models we talked about earlier, you're going to have to pay taxes on your profit. The IRS doesn't let you uh, profit from options. So Let's, without, of course, taxing you. So, again, let's look at the public uh, stock market price here. And you got issued options at a dollar, and you sold them at $10. And remember, we had a $9,000 profit associated that, with that, because you had to come up with 1000 bucks to exercise, and that your shares were worth 10000 bucks because we had 1000 shares. This profit of $9,000 here, you're going to get taxed. Now, if you exercise and it becomes stock, and you hold the stock for more than one year, you pay long-term capital gains. If you, if you exercise and sell the stock the same day, you pay short-term capital gains, or within one year. So the key here is one year of holding the stock equals long-term capital gains. 
Uh, that's the implication around options. Same thing with a private company. You got to hold the stock for a year, and then if you sell the stock, uh, you can enjoy long-term capital gains, which are, of course are a lower tax rate. So exercising is a bet. Uh, you're essentially betting whether or not your stock is going to be worth money in the future, and then you're also kind of thinking, do I, can I hold the stock for a year? Is it worth it for me to enjoy the benefits of long-term capital gains?